Hello everyone and welcome to part two, prerequisites and deployment workflow for the VRA ServiceNow ITSM 8.2 plugin. Starting with the prerequisites, we'll touch on the management instrumentation and discovery server first, or what we usually refer to as the MIT server. You wanna make sure that the MIT server is installed and configured for your ServiceNow instance, especially if you're trying to integrate between the SaaS ServiceNow and the on-prem version of VRA in your data center. If you're looking at a step-by-step -step guide to install and configure the MIT server, please reference the stage one section that I documented a while ago in my ITSM 3.0 blog. I will make sure to leave a link in the video description below. The ITSM plugin also requires, at a minimum, the Realize Automation 8.1 and 8.2. 8.2 happens to be the latest version at the moment, at the time of, of this recording. The ITSM plugin also supports the SaaS version of VRealized Automation, and that's the VRealized Automation Cloud. In both scenarios, you will need released blueprints and project entitlements in the service broker to be able to import the catalog items into ServiceNow. The ITSM 8.2 plugin also supports New York, Orlando, and Paris ServiceNow based release instances. You need to add and install the application, of course, from the ServiceNow store, and you need uh, both plugins, the user criteria scoped API and the configuration management for scoped apps installed on your instance. There is a, uh, a note in the, in the ServiceNow store that this plugin requires paid subscription. This is really the norm. You don't really pay too much attention to that, but as a background and in general, you can freely create and install custom tables on a non-production ServiceNow instance today. However, when you're creating or, or installing custom tables, like the one required by this plugin, it requires a custom table entitlement granted when ServiceNow customer purchase a product subscription. For example, you might have a single subscription and might be, and, and that subscription might include an entitlement of 50 custom uh, tables. Um, so at the end of the day, it really depends on the customer account and their agreement with ServiceNow. One last thing on this slide is that the ITSM 8.2 plugin only supports the SaaS version. It does not support the on-prem version of ServiceNow. In terms of the general workflow for integrating VRA with ServiceNow, we're really looking at four or five different stages. In a high level, stage one, which is the initial setup, this is where we configure the mid server for ServiceNow. Again, this is only required if you're integrating or want to integrate with the vRealize automation on-prem and also the creation of the VRA integration user that's going to be used when you're registering the VRA endpoint. In stage two, this is where we actually have to install the plugin. And the way we do that, first we have to add the plugin to the ServiceNow instance from the ServiceNow store and then once it's added, we install it on the ServiceNow instance. Stage three, and after doing a few configuration on the ServiceNow side, we configure our endpoints, our VRA endpoints, and we are able to create a user or a group entitlements so we can map the item catalogs that we imported from VRA to the native users in ServiceNow. Once that happens, we move to stage four, and this is where the VRA uh, or the plugin users can do day one and day two actions. Day one being deploying the VRA catalog items or even destroying them, and day two where they can perform day two actions as we will see in the following videos. Now let's take a look at a couple of things. Here you can see me, I'm logged in into my developer instance. In the filter navigator, I'm going to come in and search for MID, which is the MIT server section. 
and I'm going to go over to the server section. In the server section, you will see the MIT server and you can see that it's validated and, and it's up. This is how you want to make sure that your MIT server is connected, establishing that connection between the on-prem and the, uh, the ServiceNow instance. Another thing that you want to also uh, make sure, uh, because uh, sometimes uh, the ServiceNow MIT service service will stop if the instance goes to sleep. Uh, these developer instances are not always there. Of course, this doesn't happen when you have a ServiceNow production instance, but just in case if you're working with a developer instance, you want to make sure that at all time, once you wake up the instance, that the service, uh, the ServiceNow uh, mid server service is up and running also within the, uh, on the box that where you're running the mid server, the mid server software. Uh, one last thing, I did mention the uh, the VMware uh, Lab.org for those for that step uh, for the stage one in terms of uh, creating and installing and configuring the MIT server. What you can do is go to VMware Lab.org, and under the ITSM pl plugin menu, I have three older blogs. Go to the bottom one, which is the 3.0, and if you click on it, uh, it will the page will load. Scroll down all the way to the stage one where I talk about the configuration of the MIT server here. It's three years old, but it hasn't changed since then. You have all the details required to configure your MIT server in your home lab or, or in your organization. That takes us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.